generative AI tools you should try today that are free and easy to use. They're simple to learn, but they're going to level up your basic bitch use of ChatGPT. Like you want to take it up a notch, right? Barely five days after ChatGPT was introduced in November of 2022, it hit a million users. That has literally never happened before with any app, any tech, fastest adopted app of all time. I started a voice AI company in 2020. I've been working in the space since 2018. We've got something growing even faster and it touches on voice, but it's even bigger, which is generative AI. I've talked about tips for you guys, whether they're marketing or business or startup, and AI is a huge part of where this is all headed, so I'm going to dive into it more frequently. And if you're just joining us, this podcast covers business, marketing, and voice slash AI. I have to comment on generative AI because this is a monster opportunity. Every business is wondering, what's my generative AI strategy? So... Let's just start small and simple. You can go on Twitter and get really overwhelmed with all those big tweet threads of these are the 10 AI imaging tools that you have to try. And there's like videos and they're clearly written by AI. I mean, they're too good, but you don't need 10 tools. And what's something quick and easy you can do? So I've got two simple free tools for you to try today. You'll actually see, okay, here's the use case. And they're, they're simple to learn, but they're going to level up your basic bitch use of chat GPT. Like you want to take it up a notch, right? You're going to get more out of it. This is when it gets more powerful is when you use the little hacks that really tap into the power of the tool. The first one has to do with YouTube. I love YouTube. I've been on YouTube since I think 2011. Don't look at the old videos, please. Don't even look at anything from three years ago <laughs> with YouTube. I see this all the time. People don't fill out their description. The YouTube description is your opportunity to get your video found. It gives people information about the video. The most important thing you do in the description, of course, is timestamps, which become chapters. They're clickable, like jump links to 0, 0.45 seconds into the video or 1.35. Here's where we had the best insight or here's where... I told you the secret to success, whatever. Here's an example. I have a video about the history of post-it notes from the last episode of this podcast. That two minutes when I'm talking about Art Fry, Spencer Silver, post-it notes, it's possible someone on Google or someone in business school or someone watching Romy and Michelle is like, what is the history of a post-it note? They search that. Google serves up that clip chunk time stamped section of my video if I filled out the YouTube description correctly or if it's also in a blog post. You have to time stamp it. Most people don't do this on their videos. If you want to see the formula for a YouTube description that is done, and it was all human done all these years, but I had 72,000 views on my LLC video because I filled out the description correctly. Okay, so guess what? There is an AI tool that will help you do this better. If you're lazy or not great at it, use my YouTube descriptions as a template rubric. Like it's youtube.com slash Emily Bender. I'll link to that in the show notes if you are listening on Spotify, Apple, etc. But here's the tool, GLASP, G-L-A-S-P, GLASP. It will optimize your existing videos. I've seen people tweeting about this where GLASP is used for getting a quick rundown summary of other people's videos. And I thought the really juicy, valuable, time-saving use case for this, or at least equally valuable, is if you have lazy YouTube descriptions where you haven't written text, you haven't given links, you aren't even like, here's my camera, Amazon link. You got to give people the goods. That's the whole beauty of YouTube, link in description. GLASP will be very helpful. You can add timestamps because GLASP will show you a transcript with timestamps. You could basically copy and paste it into your description. If you want to be really lazy, just copy and paste what GLASP shoots out about your existing video. Go back and try to optimize them. We have this obsession with the new, I think it's called neophilia. I believe Tim Ferriss talked about this years ago in a term neophilia. It sounds like necrophilia, but it's not. It's the obsession with the new. You have good stuff you've already done. Maybe you just didn't optimize it. Go back. Try GLASP, G-L-A-S-P, to optimize your existing YouTube video descriptions so they will be stronger for SEO. Make sure you're adding links to your website. Add links to related videos. Make a playlist of videos that you have about that topic and say, watch the rest. People will start streaming that playlist. YouTube is algorithmically still rewarding you for the time they've spent on your channel consuming your content. Playlists are huge. Okay. So that number one tool, GLASP, give it a shot. If you're putting in the effort and time to make a video, describe it correctly, accurately, 
optimize it. Now, the second tool, ChatGPT Prompt Genius. I've been playing around with this one today. Here's why you need it. ChatGPT is an incredible tool if you give it the right prompts. You guys remember early days of search, let's say late 90s, before Google was Google. When you were back using Ask Jeeves, Alta Vista, Lycos, and even early Google, you had to do Boolean search. If you're a Gen Z, you don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, this wasn't the cards in the library, but like the Dewey Decimal System, it wasn't that, but you had to search in this very specific way to get what you wanted out of that engine. Similar situation with ChatGPT today, which is you need to know how to prompt it. Hence, everyone's talking about prompt engineers being the next hot career. It's just like Adobe Flash developers in 2009, now it's prompt engineers. And what's really interesting is it's not a STEM thing. Everyone's, oh, STEM, go, go study STEM. You got to do science, tech, engineering, math. Oh, guess what? The hottest career today, the one that's going to be fast growing, like, I want to be a prompt engineer. I hope the kids are saying, I want to be a prompt engineer instead of I want to be a TikTok influencer. Wouldn't that be great if that was the new dream? Here's what's so interesting about it. Brian Romilly talked about this on his interview on Jordan Peterson. Brian is a friend. I interviewed Brian years ago on Beetle Moment Marketing Podcast. We are making full circles here back to things I talked about with the Oracle of Voice, the wisdom keeper, the documentarian of you for your life, where your brain and spirit and body of content forever, digital footprint of 80 years lives on after you die. Go back and listen to that episode with Brian. Bananas. It was a double episode. We live life looking through the rear view mirror. I'll link to that in the show notes. So he's talking with Jordan Peterson and saying, you know what? Prompt engineers and Jordan, you're a psychologist. You can understand this well. It's people who are good at philosophy, psychology, and English. It's not a STEM skill set, which is cool because it's like, hey, English lit majors, you're back. What you chose to study is, again, valuable. Wouldn't that be neat if there was this duality between the people that I want to become a true engineer, like I'm going to learn to code, and then the people that want to be a prompt engineer, which is so much more actually qualitative, not quantitative. It's a different language in the brain. ChatGPT Prompt Genius is just a free Chrome extension. I'll put a link. You can enable it. I learned it within 30 minutes. You can basically save the prompts where you have in double brackets the like fill in the blank thing. So you could say the prompt is write me a tweet that is appealing to a 35-year-old startup founder about, and then inside the double brackets, you'd write marketing tips or you would write generative AI. Then every time you say from Prompt Genius, push this out, it then lets you fill in the brackets in ChatGPT. So you're pasting your own prompts that you don't have to keep retyping them. And you can also access a whole library of other people's prompts. They have a whole Reddit about that. You can get them right there and it's free for now. So Glass will help you to understand YouTube videos and just digest them really quickly by timestamping and transcribing the whole video or to optimize your own existing videos. That's the really cool marketing use case that I see with that tool. ChatGPT, Prompt Genius, and Glass. I will link to those in the show notes. This podcast is called Voice Marketing with Emily Binder. It is on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, all the podcatchers. You can go to emilybinder.com slash podcast to get the links to subscribe, rate, review, and see our most popular episodes playlist on Spotify. I love Spotify playlists. That's also an SEO hack you should be aware of. I have past episodes on that. I'll link to those if you're interested. Everything has SEO value if you do it correctly. And if you're doing it, you might as well get the value out of it. If indeed you are here to try to build a brand, sell a product, sell yourself, et cetera. The whole internet is linked for a reason. It's a big web. Let me know if you guys like this episode. You can rate and review. Leave the show five stars on Spotify. Thumb it up on YouTube if you're watching this. Make sure that you send it to a friend who's like, what do I do with ChatGPT? Here's two cool tools, Glass and the free Chrome extension called Prompt Genius. Simple stuff. Just start there. Don't be overwhelmed. Here we go. So there's some weird stuff going on with the blinds here. I'm going to try to bring them up and see if that helps. Now it's just gonna be like weirdly lit. It's not the right time of day to do this video, but whatever. Okay, three, two, one. Let me actually just start this over because now I know how I really want it to go. So we are now at 7.57. This is where I wanna start the podcast. I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay.